You know, I've been five years with the other brand and um, to change to, to a new brand is always a, a bit difficult, I would say, in the beginning. Oh, you know, in this game, it, results give you the confidence. Results breed more good results. and You're ready to go, mate. There's nothing you can't do. You need to know that um, what he's capable of. See, he must go right up. He's going right up. Not forward, right up. You have to feel it. So, you have to feel it. What can he say about, about me? Because he knows me for, for three years, you know, and still he comes with new things. and. I think that most people are surprised that Maxime Renault has been dominant in the MX2 class at the halfway mark, but really this shouldn't be a surprise at all. Maxime was tipped to be a world champion and a great of the sport from his early EMX 125 days. A rider like Tom Vial, in comparison, wasn't. Vial was never expected to be a world champion. Renault was. What he's doing now is merely fulfilling expectations. Like, this shouldn't be a surprise. Injury after injury through his EMX 125, EMX 250, and eventually MX2 days kind of derailed his career for a portion there. Um, he just struggled to gain momentum and didn't really make much progress through the years like 2016, 2017. But now, He's back on a factory team. He has so mom some momentum. He has confidence. And we're seeing the result of that. It's definitely not a surprise that he's been the dominant figure in MX2. And if he goes on to win the MX2 title, which halfway through the 2021 season, it definitely looks like he will, um, that wouldn't be a shock either. Renault should be this good. He had the speed. He's always had the talent. We've always believed that he could be the next MX2 world champion. Um, but he had such a bad run with uh, he had such bad run injuries. Like he explained, his his shoulder he did a lot of damage to there, and then his elbow, and that was a, a result of another rider landing on him. Yeah, I think this is kind of um, a moment that made me just real realizing I have one life, I have one career. Um, I almost messed it up with a crash that was not even really my fault. A rider jumped on me, so I'm just trying to give my best every time I have my wheels on the track and uh, enjoying, just trying to get as much pleasure, pleasure as I can and uh, just playing, playing, because uh, that's all it is about, you know, and, uh, and this, this is helping me for sure because I don't see it as I see it as a second chance, and uh, you don't have so many times a second chance, you know. So no pressure at all. On my way to uh, Kegums, we are here in Brussels, uh, Belgium. So yeah, heading for the seventh round of the season. Really looking forward to that round because the track is really nice. So yeah, just follow me during my trip. Just arrived here in Latvia, uh, in Riga, so it's now 10 p.m. We just take the location car and then uh, we are going to our hotel and uh, have a good sleep for uh, tomorrow, Friday going maybe at the track and have a little look uh, at the layout so yeah have a good night guys see you tomorrow it's Saturday uh, we're now heading to the test track to do some start practices just to yeah get the first feeling with the bike for the weekend and uh, see if everything is okay on the bike so yeah Let's go for it. I had so much uh, injuries and uh, one really big one in 2017. I was uh, um, not even sure to ride again a bike. You know, I had some nurse problem in uh, my left arm. And yeah, on those moments was really tough. And But yeah, I rocked as much as I could. And um, so now I enjoy even more being here. 
because uh, yeah, I know where I pass through and uh, yeah, it's just full pleasure now and uh, enjoying every moment of it. My name is Thierry Van den Bosch. I'm training Maxime for three years and a half now. Going very well, you know, he's improving himself every year and, and a big uh, step this year. Uh, hopefully keep on going uh, this way until the end of the season. Il faudra que je vois, de toute façon je reviendrai le, méca le mécanisme, mais il faudra que je vois comment je suis placé euh, sur la moto à peu près. Je pense que je serai à peu près comme ça, je pense, à peu près, au niveau taille. Comme ça, tu vois bien là. Le track looks really nice, bumpy and uh, yeah, sketchy some places, so really have to, um, to get the focus for tomorrow. Si tu arrives à vraiment cabrer celle-là, pour passer au-dessus, déjà tu gagnes de la vitesse, et après c'est de la vitesse que tu gardes jusqu'au bout des vagues quoi. Tu vois, si tu arrives à repasser au-dessus de celle-là et pas atterrir ici et faire pam et rebondir. Parce que si tu atterris là, là, les deux, deux, deux roues, tu peux pas, tu peux pas faire grand-chose, hein, je pense. Celle-là, la ou la scrubber ou quoi, faire l'absorber, cabrer ici un peu. Ouais. On va venir chercher. Et après là, réussir par contre à faire double. My expectations for tomorrow are for sure uh, getting some really good points uh, in the championship and uh, keep on going on the same uh, same way of, of uh, riding uh, since the beginning of the year. So yeah, I'm just gonna now uh, try to focus tonight and uh, get ready for tomorrow. It's Sunday morning. We are uh, now on our way to the track. Uh, it's 7.44, so yeah, just uh, getting ready slowly for the warm-up at 9.15 and uh, then start, ready to start the day. Morning. Ça va? All good? Comment ça va? Ready to rumble? Yeah. So he's come, he's come a long way, but like in terms of his ability, his work ethic, his de determination, he's undoubtedly like the most determined rider on the line, I would say. Yeah, now I'm starting the day with uh, going to prepare my stuff a little bit and then uh, going to the physio, so I'm going to have just a little checkup and uh, releasing a little bit some muscles and uh, getting fully ready and fully focused for the for the practice to get some good feelings on the track and then uh, before both models I will go back to the physio have a little manipulation let's say and uh, be ready Yeah, actually, my arm is not 100%. Uh, I don't talk so much about it because I don't want to... Yeah, there is no excuse. I mean, I'm used to it and it's not a problem for me as in the riding, but my left arm is for sure um, less strong than, uh, than the right arm. Uh, I still have um, sensibility problem on my two fingers, on the two, the index and yeah, the middle one. And um, so, yeah, I ju I'm just used to it now. You know, I don't feel my clutch with the two fingers. I just um, feel it a different way, you know, just not sensitive, but feel it as, as a movement. And, but I'm used to it and it's not a big problem. I can perform uh, on a high level with it, so this is not a problem. I'm just going through it. Never got my ass slapped like that. <laughs> <laughs>
Maxi Renault once again, 30.7, so only a tenth off. Sector two, imminent as he enters sector three, almost now-ish. And uh, Maxi Renault, is it green again or 32-1? Maxi Renault moves up to second, 0.4, so the gap's still coming down. There's still some uh, life left in the track. Let's go through the uh, confirmation then. Jed Beat on pole for Rockstar Energy Husqvarna, ahead of Maxim and Renault. Third, time's very, very tight. Fourth, rise and gifting. Nicholas Horat was fifth, went at 86. Practice went pretty good. Uh, finished second, uh, second in the time practice, so really good uh, gate pick for the for the motos. Uh, feeling with the track is quite good. Uh, actually, it's uh, tricky and uh, some sharp bumps, but uh, I feel really good, feel comfortable. So yeah, just try to make two good starts in the motos and uh, go for a good result. I use, I, I've been in a re rehab center, you know, with uh, um, I think during four or five months, and uh, I think the biggest thing that helped me was that I was in the center with uh, people that were really, really in a bad situation and seeing how they were just enjoying the life and smiling and always have the joke in them, saying a joke or something, you know, I was like, I cannot complain. I cannot complain. I have my two legs, my two arms. Uh, one was not working so good, but I could have done, yeah, could have been so worse. So yeah, it was just, you cannot, you cannot just uh, say, I'm done. You have to work and uh, if you want something, just go get it and that's what I did and I, I just, yeah, worked so hard and uh, always believed in that and one day the nerves started to react a little bit and and from there we, we worked on it and uh, it came back so yeah that was a little bit kind of a redemption you know and uh, mentally I think I'm ready to give it all and uh, I will never ever uh, stop and never ever uh, yeah always believe you know so that's also a strong point. Yeah, really happy with it. Uh, I got a good start, but not the best, actually. Uh, I think I was fifth. And then I... Good job. I'm surprised, uh, but he's doing even better in the key moments of the championship. The right moment when the others are a little bit in trouble, bam, is there taking the most of the points. Uh, the moment where someone is popping up and saying like maybe I can fight with him, bam, is winning again. So he's doing it very, very well. Uh, I will not be surprised if at the end of the season he can uh, win the championship. Uh, yeah, for sure this is something that going to um, make me feel complete. I mean, I worked for it since uh, I'm a kid. I'm dreaming about it since I'm a kid. Um, getting that world title in 1-5 to five was also something that was part of uh, the way of following, you know, and then getting those two injuries 
also get me a little uh, slap in the face, you know, and uh, wakes me up. Get, wakes me up about don't think this world title gonna come easy, you know. You have to work for it. There, we are uh, so many young and talented riders in the world, and um, yeah, you just have to want it more than the others. And now I feel like I'm ready this year. I've put uh, the job uh, in, and uh, but yeah, there's always a part of. Uh, unknown you know so but yeah i have the red plate i feel good my bike is working really good i feel in shape we will see this season how it uh, it will end i made a big push in the first 15 minutes and then just yeah it was mode so it was not pushing all the motor you know i, I tried to make some quick passes and uh, i think after 10 minutes i was second and charged to the to the front because he was already a little bit gone, and uh, I passed him. I think at half half moto more or less, made a little gap and uh, it was fine. There is your championship leader. Well, Maxim Renault started the day 26 points clear, and after beating Guadagnini, his closest rival in race one, that gap has now gone out to 29 points as we head into race two. bringing his A-game today. It's going to be the perfect day for the Frenchman. Took three points out of his rival, Mathieu Guadagnini, in race one. He's going to take another five points out of him here in race two. On his way down to the line then, Maxime Renault. He started the lap 2.1 seconds clear. He's been pretty much immaculate all day. He crosses the line, goes 1-1 for the first time in his career. He wins the Grand Prix. Maxime Renault. Continues to lead the championship in MX2 and your overall podium today, Maxim Renault, Yago Kitt, and Tia Guadagnini. You obviously had riders like Gautier Poulin, who challenged for world titles, Marvin Muskan, who was a world champion twice, um, but Roman Fevre has kind of really led the way for f aspiring French riders who want to be a star in the MX2 B series. He obviously um, his road to the top was unorthodox, he definitely did it a different way to most riders, but he's been the shining light for French fans for quite a while now. The first year in 2015, uh, yeah, I was rookie in the class, uh, you know, you, you are coming, you don't expect anything. I was uh, on the factory team with a new bike and everything, I was learning everything every time I was on the bike. And uh, yeah, he has a good feeling, good vibes, and uh, I was just enjoying. And when you are rookie, you don't care about so much the result, and uh, you just try to get some experience. And then yeah, that that year everything everything clicked, and uh, yeah, we win many races, many GPs, and the world title of course. So Roman Fevre is about to make history here. A rookie winning in the MXGP class, he wins the race. And he will now realize it. It was, um, let's say, mentally, it was maybe the easiest year I, that I had. Um, but like to win, uh, if, I, yeah, if I win at the end of the season, it will be six years after my, world title, my first world title. So uh, it can be for sure a, a good one, especially with the, all the hard years that I had in the past and um, for my team too because uh, I think Kawasaki has never been world champion on the 450 so um, yeah uh, I would like yes. Mm -hmm.